try my best to talk loud in this mic, but this is really weird. <laughs> um, okay, let's go. All right, well, thank you for being here, everybody. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself because I actually don't really know a lot of you in this room, which is awesome, but also very nerve wracking. Um, but I'm Corinne, but people call me Co. Um, and maybe I'll just grab this. Sorry, moment of suspense here. Okay, so my name is Corinne, but you can call me Co. And um, you may know me as many things in the community. I find it really hard to define myself as um, one thing because I like to just explore all of it. Um, but my latest ventures uh, in the community here are uh, I started out as a graphic designer and then explored illustration, painting, uh, street artist. I've been. I do meditation and energy work. Uh, most recently, I'm a DJ. I teach art sometimes, and uh, also most recently, I became a tattoo apprentice. So, I mean, all in all, my biggest thing is drawing. So I love to draw, um, and I do a lot of street art and community engaged art and public art. And these are some of the other things that I've tried. I'm not gonna read them off, I'm sure you can read them. Um, I call these my panic jobs. Um, <laughs> because I tend to, I, so I quit like my regular job or like formal job when I was 23. Um, Cause I just knew I wasn't meant for an office. Uh, and throughout the years, I'm 29 now to give you context, um, I tend to get I get panicked, I get a job, and then I realize that I need to go back to where I was and just do my own thing. So these are all my panic jobs. Um, so as you can see, my career uh, so far has been a lot of trials and errors and just trying to find myself uh, through my art. Um, yeah, it's the thing I like doing the most. Uh, and I, so I journal about that because I sometimes feel insecure that I'm kind of too all over the place. And I realize that my medium is just curiosity and I just like to explore a bunch of different things. And so, thank you. <laughs> um, and so let me show you how I cope with all of this chaos, but I say chaos in a very positive way. Um, but first, let's start from the beginning. So I've always been a very expressive human. Um, this is me in 1997. Uh, and there's always been this fire within me uh, to create and to just make stuff. And I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, growing up, I always had permission to cope with art. So I, my parents really allowed me to be who I am. Uh, they allowed me to make a mess. Uh, I was never told that, you know, to stay clean, to like not do this. I was always very much cherished uh, as the artistic being that I am. Uh, but with this side uh, comes also uh, another side of me that for the purpose of this presentation, I'm just going to call shadow. Um, yeah, this is one of the sketches I did in therapy. I do a lot of sketching while I do therapy. Um, and it's a part of me, like I said, I, I just prefer to keep it behind closed doors. I'm naturally a very social person, but I do have this part of me that uh, is very heavy and it comes in different forms, but I would say in my early 20s, something started which kind of manifested as a chronic pain condition. And so I'm keeping this very abstract because it's still something I'm like unpacking uh, with myself and it's something that I'm still living to this day. So I find it really hard uh, to define to especially an audience of people <laughs> right here. But in like general terms, um, it's very much related to the relationship that I have with my body. Um, and this can manifest in uh, a lot of different symptoms, but here are my main ones. And so that being said, art has always been a place of impulsive comfort for me to cope with whatever I'm dealing with whenever that shadow comes to visit me or the heaviness sets in. Uh, some of it can be monetized, which I'm very grateful for. Um, most of it is chaos. So 
One time I spent a day making 50 pom-poms for no reason at all. Uh, <laughs> just because that's all I could do that day. And I did it. And then I have 50 pom-poms now. Um, so with that, my journals kind of became like my, uh, my most important companions uh, because I put everything in there and when my brain is going a mile an hour and my body can't follow, uh, that's where I find refuge. Uh, some of it is pure chaos, some of it turns out to be pretty poetic, which is fun. Um, yeah, so it's where everything is born. So when being in my body is too much, like I said, I can come here. And then I usually will uh, go through my old sketchbooks, revisit them, and then make actual final work. Um, so it's never like a waste of time in my mind. So it's a place of personal wisdom, chaos, and but it's a place that's only for me. So it's a place that I don't actually intend to show anybody this, uh, except you guys today. <laughs> um, but there's, you know, there's a ton more that I would never show. Um, but it's a space that I have for myself. And this impulse, it feels much bigger than me. Um, it's, I don't really know how to, to define it fully to you in words, um, but it's a survival instinct that I have to just like make stuff. <laughs> And so with that, um, this project, so this is Energy Being. He came with us today, or they, I should say, because they don't have a gender. Um, and so I made myself into my ultimate form. So I was dealing with some stuff. This character came back in my sketchbook a bunch of times for a bunch of different reasons. And um, I decided to just make it <laughs> live. And so I made it and it was a therapeutic process for me. And now they live with us and it travels around my house and my roommates and partner are very forgiving of the space that they take. Um, yeah, okay, I'll lift it up. It's like eight feet tall. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> So this is, this is my final form, I would say. <laughs> like the Pokemon evolution of me. Um, and it's my energetic body, really. Like in plain terms, it's me as an energy. And uh, yeah, it brings me a lot of comfort to just have it around the house. And so I know I don't fit into the traditional way of working or doing business, uh, but I know how to follow my heart because I always had permission to, and I think that's really important. Uh, to acknowledge. And so when I, ref when I reflect on my most uh, fulfilling projects, I noticed a pattern, and so I called it Co Cycle of Creativity. You can use it if you want. <laughs> um, it'll be $20 per screenshot, though, because I got to make money. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, but I'm just kidding. Um, so this is my cycle that I tend to go through depending on the, well, not depending, all the time. And then I make projects based on this. So the cycle is that I feel shadow, I create somewhere to have, or I create something to have somewhere to put it. Um, the work comes out. That's usually when I have my idea to like make it an actual project. I release it and I share it. I let others receive it and perceive it in their own way. So I like really release it there. It's not, not mine anymore. Uh, then I connect to others and then I feel good again. And then I keep going. <laughs> and so an example of this project is, um, or of this cycle, I should say, is my street offering project. Um, so I always try to find ways of turning all of my shadowness <laughs> into tools of connection. So in 2020, uh, when everything was shutting down, I do a lot of festival art, a lot of live painting, things like that. So I lost all my contracts and didn't have anything to do. Um, and I noticed I just had all these like scrap pieces of wood in my studio and my house just laying around. I was not feeling good. Um, and I was just literally like on my floor painting and watching movies. Uh, Cause I can't just sit and watch a movie by the way, this, I have to do something. So I was just making these little paintings really fast cause I had nothing, you know, it was just a place to put my, my stuff. And then I was like, okay, 
how can I share these? What would be a good way to do it? I really believe in accessible art and not having people pay $1,000 for something. Uh, so I decided to just go and hide it and like offer it to the city. And it got me walking around. It got me back in my body. It got me, you know, observing and being mindful of my environment. And then people started connecting to me. So they started, you know, messaging me online and being like, oh, my girlfriend loves your art. And I found, I found this for her and I brought it to her. Or one time I hid art in a park and they're like, oh my God, I've been looking for your art for so long. And I just walked out of the park and there it was. So I've been having these like really fun moments of synchronicity with people um, all through, you know, social media, but also in person, which is really cool. And so the process of sharing is really important to me and it's what helps me let go of my shadow until the cycle comes back around. And so last summer, I again found myself in that cycle. I felt really heavy. I thought, I don't know what to do with my life anymore. Like the things that brought me joy didn't bring me as much joy anymore. I was really stressed and I didn't really know where I was going or what I was doing. So I finally just asked myself, like, what have I been too afraid to try and too afraid to ask for? And that answer was tattooing. So I have been getting tattooed myself since I freshly turned 18. As soon as my birthday came, I was at the tattoo parlor. Um, for me, it's been a great way of, you know, honoring my body and feeling more comfortable in my skin. And, um, you know, I've been illustrating this whole time. I have that. I want to connect to others on a regular basis. Um, I know a lot about the body, the nervous system, and pain. And, uh, you know, the resilience and transformation that tattooing can bring to a body. And so it just felt right. And I asked for it, and I was lucky enough to land an apprenticeship with an awesome mentor, uh, Becky D, shout out. Um, yeah, so that is my new venture. So it's very fresh. I'm not tattooing people yet, um, but I will let you all know. <laughs> and so my journey is really not um, something that is linear. It's not something that has clear answers. If you're looking for that, I'm not your person. <laughs> um, but I no longer measure my success with numbers or followers or things like that. Um, but mostly how I feel uh, in my day to day. So if my nervous system is calm, if my body feels okay, then I know that I'm doing something right. And so I'm a really big believer that art can be a tool for self-soothing and connection. Um, and I'm just here to give you permission to use it because art is for everybody. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.